Hi everybody, welcome. I am glad to see you join. I am I'm away from my home office right now. Uh, Sia Knight, hi, thank you for joining us. Glad to have you here. My name is Elena Tercero and I am the owner of Little Light Accounting. It's a CPA firm located in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And my goal and purpose for these periscopes that I've done is to provide tax tips for businesses. So hopefully I can add some value to you and your business. Today I'm specifically going to talk about um, advertising and marketing and I do have some notes so I will be looking down at them um, occasionally. Hopefully I can keep them up higher so I can keep looking at you guys. Um, thank you for joining. You know, Make sure that you do share this broadcast with your followers if you find value in this. I do also have three tax tips on my website that you can sign up for. It is free if you go to bit.ly forward slash LLA tax tips. So that way you can get those tax tips and some of those I will speak about. One of them that is actually on there is about marketing and advertising. So for businesses right now, uh, what types, for those of you that are on, what types of advertising and marketing do you currently do for your business? I'll give you guys a few, a few minutes to go ahead and type that in. Um, you know, just wondering, kind of getting a feel for what type of advertising that everybody does and whether or not, uh, you know, how you classify that and what you, you know, if you have any questions about what you're doing. Facebook ads, uh, Simple Bookkeeper says, you know, and that's a lot of what people do now, you know, traditional, tra traditional marketing and advertising in print. You know, of course, that's going to be deductible. We get a lot of questions nowadays on social media and what types of those marketing and advertising are those deductible. So traditional, you know, if you're going to go to print, if you're going to go to radio, if you're going to advertise uh, in pamphlets, yes, that is all deductible. You want to keep your receipts for those, of course. You know, so that way you have documentation of it. But what about social media? So we've got websites, right? We have to buy our domain name. That is deductible. That is considered marketing and advertising. So you want to make sure that you keep those records and you've got that information there. So then you've got the domain name. Then what? Then you have to host that somewhere, right? So then you're going to have web hosting. That is going to be a monthly expense. You can pay it up front for the entire year. Also deductible. You're, uh, either you're going to build the website yourself or you're going to find somebody else to build it for you. If you build it yourself, uh, then it's not deductible because you're an employee for your company. If you outsource it, have somebody else do that for you, it is deductible. Keep those receipts. Uh, if you're building your email list, you have a CRM um, that, that people are coming in and opting in to an email list. If you are paying for that service, that is also deductible. There are so many out there. Infusionsoft, Benchmark, Constant Contact, MailChimp. Some of those you have to pay for, some of them are free. So if you're paying for those services, that is also an allowable marketing expense, which is really important. Uh, Simple Bookkeepers talked about Facebook ads. Yes, those are also deductible. You want to keep your receipts. Facebook, depending on how you set it up, will send you a receipt once a week. Or if you've met that threshold, you know you want to you want to pay for twenty dollars. You know every time it reaches twenty dollars, you want to do that. When you're looking at those sorts of things for Facebook ads, you want to make sure that you're monetizing that. You're tracking the record. You just don't want to dump money in to advertising, you wanna be able to see that that advertising is converting. And so what are you trying to, what's your call to action? What do you want people to do with those ads? So do keep in mind that, you know, from a, from a business perspective, um, a marketing perspective, what do you want those ads to do? 
Just keep that in mind when you're doing that. Um, if you have a business where you can ba uh, make a car decal or a magnet that has your business logo, then that is also deductible as a marketing or advertising expense because that is exactly what you're doing with those car decals. You want people to know the services that you offer and so you're putting it out there and you're driving around town, you know, just going day to day, day to day activities. That is a marketing tool for you. Your business cards, of course, is an advertising and a marketing expense. So you want to make sure that whoever you purchase your business cards from that you also have a receipt for that information. Uh, if you're brand new, you're just starting out in your business and you don't have a logo and a design yet and you pay somebody to set that up for you and for with that design, that design cost is also a marketing and advertising expense, also deductible. Uh, what about um, local events, you know, scholarships, <clears throat> um, or not scholarships, you're, you're going to advertise at a local event and they're going to put your business logo in uh, a, you know, the material that, that they send out. Or if there's something on Facebook and they use your logo at, and you are a sponsor of that local event, that is also deductible. Um, you want to look at also clothing. If you make clothing that has your logo, maybe it's um, you know on the side or if it's on the back or you're making it for your, um, you know, my kids are all in sports. My daughter was a cheerleader two years ago and so we bought the t-shirts for all of the kids. And as part of what, part of that and what we did is we put the logo of their um, of the company on the back of the shirt that became a marketing and advertising expense for us so that was also deductible um, if you're hosting webinars I and mean, how many people are doing webinars you know right now trying to bring people into their business and you can't just run a webinar without software you need uh, software to be able to do that. So you have to go out to a third party to purchase this information, this third party software. That is also a marketing expense. Uh, if you need photos, stock photos that you want to use that, or you're going to have somebody create photos and graphics for you to be able to use, and you can't always just go out to Google and snag whatever there is out there you really want to make sure that you have the licenses to those so you can go to stock photos and you can purchase them sometimes you can purchase them for a dollar and you can use them as many times as you want that expense that you paid for that for that photo is also a deductible marketing expense same thing with if you're going to be on the webinar and you're going to use music and it's royalty free you've you have the permission to use that music you want to make sure that you have the permission because you are selling something in connection to that webinar so you're not selling the music of course but you have that in the background you want to make sure that you have the rights to be able to broadcast that music so if you go out um, audio junkie I think is one place where you can purchase sound music that you can play and then you own um, specific rights to it and I don't know exactly um, how they work so you have to definitely check that out but I know that's one place where you can purchase things um, music for um, you know other items that you're gonna brand uh, that has your logo on it uh, coffee mugs or t-shirts like I had mentioned before um, stickers calendars usually at the end of you know November December we get in the mail lots of calendars magnets for the refrigerators uh, those are another type of marketing and advertising expense that you can have um, and those are those are some of the the things that I can think of off the top of my head um, for those of you that are joining do you have any other things that you do or use that you're wondering if um, it is an allowable marketing expense hmm 
I really do appreciate everyone taking the time to listen in on the Periscope. Now, I do have a CPA firm in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I am licensed through the state of New Mexico and I can be reached. Uh, my, my, I have a Facebook page, but I also have my own website, littlelightaccounting.com, and you can sign up for my tax tips. I do have three tax tips that are um, on there. Uh, you know, make sure that you sign up. Um, thank you, Simple Bookkeeper. Um, I really appreciate uh, the positive affirmation about what I've spoken on um, today in this in this broadcast. It really helps uh, to see somebody else knowing, you know, that that knows the business and that can talk about the tax tips that that uh, that I'm sharing. So thank you very much for joining. I really appreciate it. Uh, so if you want to get those tax tips and to hear more from me and about my services, bit, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash L-L-A tax tips. You can sign up there. Now please uh, share this with your friends. Uh, those of you that are joining on the rebroadcast, I really appreciate you joining in. I do hope that I have provided value to you and your business. I will be back again tomorrow to talk about entertainment and what can be deducted in regards to entertainment. This one can sometimes be a little bit of a gray area. Um, and I'll talk more specifically just about entertainment, usually you know, on the tax return. For those of you that have seen the tax return, it's meals slash entertainment. But I'm going to focus primarily on the entertainment aspect of it tomorrow. So make sure to tune in to that. Follow me, please, so that way you can get notifications of when I go live. This week I've been a little um, sporadic and haven't been able to set a set time for me, but my I do have four kids, so things are a little crazy. We're getting ready to go back to school. Once all of that settles down, I'll I'll get into a groove and get into a schedule so that way everybody will know when I'll be on and if you can catch me live, great, I really appreciate it and if you can't, then you can always catch me on the rebroadcast. I do have, so of course, Periscope only keeps these up for 24 hours, but I do have them and hopefully they always save, saved on catch.me, so it's K-A-T-C-H dot M-E. Of course, it's Elena Tercero, and so if you don't catch it within that 24 hours, you can always check it out there. So I really appreciate you joining in. I look forward to sharing more information with you tomorrow.